okay so very good evening to all of you guys welcome to byju's exam prep so this session is related to your structure analysis part in which we will discuss the problem which is important for hpcl bhel and tspc examination right so you can join our uh, gate achiever series also guys on our application and uh, there is one scholarship test guys which is on 29th of october at 8 pm in which you will get 90 percent scholarship up to 90 percent scholarship on gate preparation program okay so let's start the session guys let's start the session so this is your question number one kindly tell me the correct answer guys the live load please give your answer in the chat box okay quickly because we have 32 33 question which we have to discuss okay and uh, you are able to understand each and every question as well as the concept part okay quickly give the answer guys this is the first question live load with time can vary in what it is in terms of magnitude in terms of position neither position nor magnitude position as well as magnitude tell me guys the live load value can vary with respect to what the live load value tell me guys quickly d position as well as magnitude very nice guys very nice let me explain it as very simple question very nice gurpreet are baba you know that this is our structure okay just consider this is our structure and on this particular structure guys we have a simply supported condition and let us suppose a udl is there which is trying to move over this okay now you know that guys according to the live load condition right according to the live load condition the length of udl can vary on the structure and let us consider the intensity of it as w kilo newton per meter so you know that guys if the length of udl is varying on the structure then the magnitude of force will also change as well as you know that guys the position of live load will also get changed right because it is a live load right so that's why d is the correct answer hello santu how are you d is the correct answer for the problem very nice wali very nice uh santu gurpreet afrid impact load results from which type of effect of load applied impact load impact load result from which type of effect of load b dynamic or static guys impact means what if you drop a load on a structure then it is a dynamic condition that particular object is trying to accelerate that means that particular object is having certain acceleration and due to which the impact is to be done right so that's why which particular condition is to be correct definitely it should be dynamic not a static one sudden load right and sudden load condition means not sudden load sudden load is a different thing and uh, impact load is a different thing right next question guys how many compatibility equation should be written if we have n number of redundant reaction tell me guys how many extra equations are required to find out the n number of redundant reaction that is the question guys n minus 1 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tell me guys quickly 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 how many compatible equation are required if we have n number of redundant reactions it should be b b is the correct answer are baba b is the correct answer just tell me guys just imagine if you have two equation like x plus y is equal to 20 okay so tell me guys how many equations are required to find out the value of x and to find out the value of y tell me guys how many equation you have required only two right only two if i write one more equation i am able to find out the value of x and y easily so guys the total number of variable and the total number of equation are nothing as it should be same then only we can find out the variable part right that's why b should be the correct answer b should be the correct answer next question in front of you guys flexibility matrix is always a symmetric matrix non-symmetric matrix anti-symmetric or it depend upon the load applied symmetric means i think all of you know that we can interchange the row and column yes it should be symmetric in nature it should be symmetric in nature you know that guys if i write flexibility matrix which is basically two cross two right so you know that guys what are the element over here f11 f12 
F21 and F22. Now you know that guys, as per the property of flexibility matrix as well as the stiffness matrix, the diagonally opposite element are always same in magnitude as well as in terms of sign. So if you interchange row and column, the matrix will remain same. There is no change. If you write in this way also, you will get the same thing. Like if I write F11, then F21, this one is F12 and this one is F22. The matrix will remain same. There is no change. That's why A should be the correct answer. Very nice. Next question, guys. While using slope deflection method, in which direction movement taken as positive? In slope deflection method, in which particular direction you are considering the movement should be positive? It should be clockwise, anti-clockwise or depend upon case, depend upon loading. Tell me guys quickly. Afrid, okay. Anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. That means anti-clockwise movement is positive. Tell me guys, tell me. It should be A or it should be B. It should be B. Some are saying B, some are saying A. Okay. Now anyone who can tell me guys, do you remember, let us suppose if we have two end as a fixed end and let us suppose this is our UDL. Correct. Now, do you remember guys, what is this value of bending moment or sorry, moment? Can I say that WL square by 12 and this is also WL square by 12? Now tell me guys, which particular value is positive, which particular value is negative. At end A, it is positive or at end B, it is positive. Now tell me guys. At end A, it is negative and this one is what? Positive. Yes or no? Yes or no? Gurpreet, Abdul, Afrid, Santu, Wali, Bhera. Tell me guys. Yes or no? Yes. So definitely tell me guys, in this particular case, if we say that, if we have a clockwise movement, then only it is a positive in nature. Right? So that's why A should be the correct answer for the problem. A should be the correct answer. Next question in front of you guys. If support B settle down by 1 mm downward, then what is the direction of rotation at point A? Right? Let me show you the support condition. Okay. Just imagine guys, this is our one of the end which is fixed. Another end is also fixed. Let us consider this end is A and this end is B. So right now, as per the question, this particular support is settled. Okay. Kindly consider this beam as a fixed beam. Okay. Now let us suppose guys, this particular support is settled down by 1 mm. By 1 mm. Now you need to tell me guys, what should be the direction of rotation at point A? What should be the direction of rotation at point A? Negative. Positive. B. Negative. Direction of rotation. What is the direction of rotation at point A? So, some are saying, sir, positive. Some are saying negative. But tell me, guys, in this particular case, you know that, the listen carefully, then only you can understand this point, okay? Tell me, guys, what is the value of theta A over here? If both the end are fixed. If both end are fixed, then what should be the condition? Tell me guys, in this case. It is what? Theta is, theta is equal to how much? Theta is 0. Theta A is 0. Right? So can I say that guys, we are trying to apply the moment which is to be like this. That means the rotation which is occurring, right, when the fixed support is not there, it should be in this direction. Right? Which is nothing as our clockwise direction. Which is nothing as our clockwise direction. Correct? Correct? In general, the rotation should be clockwise in direction. Now tell me guys, for whether the value is 0 or whether you have value, it doesn't matter right now. But tell me guys, the direction is fixed. Direction is fixed. If value is 0, there is no issue. If value is, let us suppose some value we are having, but rotation direction is what? Clockwise in nature. If you have rotation as a clockwise, then theta 
is positive or negative tell me guys then theta is positive or negative theta is positive or negative it should be it should be positive it should be positive that's why a is the correct answer that's why a is the correct answer clear very nice let's move to the next question how many slope deflection equation are possible if four supports are there four support means let us suppose guys one just consider random support condition it doesn't matter whether you are considering fixed or you are considering some uh, hinges okay so if there are four support then how many slope deflection are possible this is a this is b this is c and this is d tell me guys how many slope deflection equation are possible quickly write the answer it should be 0 3 4 6 guys you know that for a single span i need to write two slope deflection equation one is ab and second is ba then we have bc then we have cb cd and dc so how many equation are required slope deflection equation it should not be four it should not be four kindly count it yes the answer should be six yeah the answer should be six we know that for each and every span i need to write two equation i need to write two equation i need to write two equation so total number of equation which is required is six not four clear okay next question if a member of truss is in compression if a member of a truss is in compression then what will be the direction of force that it will apply to the joint that means let us suppose this is a truss let us suppose this is a truss okay now let us consider one of the member is in compression one of the member is in compression so let's cut it okay so this member is in compression okay now then what should be the direction of force which is to be applied by the joint at the joint by this particular member that is the question it should be outward inward it depend upon case no force will be there tell me guys b inward inward you can see here guys this is the direction this is another direction right so it should be what it should be inward it should be inward it should be inward not outward guys you can see here this is what this is compression in member so opposite of this one we need to apply at the joint so that's why guys it should be inward in nature clear next question guys next question which of the following are zero force member which of the following are zero force member that is the question which of the following are zero force member how many zero force members are there fg okay then hi okay and hj okay so you can see here guys this is basically j this is i okay santu a what other student says tell me guys a very nice you can see here guys this is the member which is perpendicular to these two member that means this is a non-collinear member and at this particular joint there is no external load no external support reaction right that's why fg will have zero force similarly if you talk about hi so what is this guys this is again two member which is collinear in nature this is non-collinear in nature again it will have zero force similarly if you talk about hj it will have zero force right so only three members are there which are having zero force over here okay that means answer is a according to option answer is a right now tell me guys the next question in front of you the same question is there the figure is same in this particular case you just need to uh, tell me 
which of the option is having zero force member. But now you have to tell me how many zero force members are there. Total number of zero force member. <coughs> Total number of zero force member. Tell me guys, what will be the answer? What is the total number of zero force member in the above given system? C, 9, okay. We'll check it out, Afrid. Santu, 20. How it is possible? It is not given in the option if even. Huh. Yeah, okay, okay, 10, 10, 10. Okay, any other student who can give the correct answer for this? What should be the total number of zero force member? Okay, no issue, no issue, Santu. I know that. Okay, guys, so kindly understand this concept. You know that, guys, this particular member will have zero force because at this particular joint, there is no external load, no extra support reaction. Two members are collinear, one is non collinear, it should be zero. What about this one? This one is also zero. This one is also zero. Now, while analyzing other member, please remove these member, right? While analyzing the other one. So you can see here guys, one, two, and three. So these two member are collinear. This one is non-collinear. Kindly make it zero. If it is zero, then definitely this one is also zero. Okay. Similarly, you can analyze this one also guys. These two member are collinear. This one is non-collinear. Make it zero. Remove it. These two collinear, non-collinear, make it zero. If it is zero, then this is also zero. Now remove this member, remove this member, collinear, and this one is non-collinear, make it zero. So how many member we are having, which is having zero force? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. C is the correct answer for the problem. C is the correct answer for the problem. Nine or ten? Nine. Any other member, guys, which you want to add? Okay, let's move to the next question. What is the change in length of member if temperature increased by delta T and expansion coefficient is alpha? What is the change in, uh, change in length of member if temperature increased by delta? Very simple question. L alpha delta T. We know that guys, L alpha delta T should be the answer, right? So D is the correct answer for the problem. D is the correct answer for the problem. Next question. Virtual work theorem and Casti glanos theorem. In which of the following cases is this theorem applicable? Right. You need to tell me guys which of the following condition is there for which virtual work theorem and Casti glanos theorem should be applicable. That is the question. <coughs> B. Gurpit D. Afrit C. Guys, the assumption is the member or whatever structure you are using, in that particular structure, the support should be non-yielding in condition. That means it should not settle down or it should not have any kind of trivial reaction. Right? It always have a non-trivial reaction. That is the first thing. Okay? Second thing is, our material should be linear elastic in nature, right? That is the basic assumption of Hooke's law also, right? The member should be linear elastic in material. That's why guys, B is the correct answer for the problem. Next question. In deflection diagram, which of the following can have zero angular deflection? Zero angular deflection. <coughs> Tell me guys, fixed support, yes it should be fixed support, we know that guys at fixed support the slope is equal to how much, it is always equal to 0, 0, 0, that's why C is the correct answer for the problem. Next question, identify the correct statement of the following, correct statement, kindly find the correct statement over here. 
टू डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम आर अवेलेबल एट ईच जॉइंट ऑफ पिन जॉइंटेड प्लेन फ्रेम सिक्स डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम आर अवेलेबल एट ईच जॉइंट ऑफ पिन जॉइंटेड स्पेस फ्रेम फोर डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम आर अवेलेबल एट ईच जॉइंट ऑफ रिजिड जॉइंटेड प्लेन फ्रेम एंड थ्री डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम आर अवेलेबल एट ईच जॉइंट ऑफ पिन जॉइंटेड स्पेस फ्रेम दैट इज द स्टेटमेंट एंड टेल मी विच वन इज द करेक्ट वन संतु बी सिक्स डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम इज अवेलेबल एट पिन जॉइंट स्पेस फ्रेम ओके एनी अदर स्टूडेंट बी गाइज ए ए इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस इट मे बी पॉसिबल यू मे हैव अ मल्टीपल आंसर ऑल्सो काइंडली थिंक अबाउट इट ओके नॉट टेल मी गाइज इन केस ऑफ प्लेन पिन जॉइंटेड प्लेन फ्रेम यू नो दैट गाइज इट इज बेसिकली अ टू डी स्ट्रक्चर सो इन केस ऑफ टू डी स्ट्रक्चर डू यू रिमेंबर गाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर ज्वाइंट कैन मूव इन टू डायरेक्शन वन इज डेल्टा एक्स एंड डेल्टा वाई यस और नो डेल्टा एक्स एंड डेल्टा वाई यस और नो दैट मीन्स इट हैव टू डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम आर अवेलेबल एट ईच जॉइंट ऑफ प्लेन पिन जॉइंटेड स्ट्रक्चर सिमिलरली इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द देर आर थ्री डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम आर अवेलेबल एट ईच जॉइंट ऑफ पिन जॉइंटेड स्पेस फ्रेम स्पेस फ्रेम मीन्स वॉट थ्री डी ट्रस्ट इन केस ऑफ थ्री डी ट्रस्ट यू मे हैव अ जॉइंट विच कैन मूव इन थ्री डायरेक्शन डेल्टा एक्स डेल्टा वाई एंड डेल्टा जेड यस और नो दैट्स वाई डी इज द करेक्ट एंड ए इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट डी इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट ए इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट यस और नो टेल मी गाइज Yes, A and D both are the correct answer. Both are the correct answer. Okay, let's move to the next one. Calculate the DK value for plane jointed plane frame. Pin jointed plane frame. What should be the value of DK? What should be the value of DK, guys? Tell me quickly. Do you remember the formula? Two J minus R E. Calculate it and let me know the correct answer. What should be the value of DK? Two J minus three. सॉरी टू जे माइनस आर ई पुट द वैल्यू एंड गेट द आंसर एंड लेट मी नो द आंसर गाइस See, okay. Just count the number of joint first. You know that, guys. One joint, two joint, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two into eight minus R E. R E means one, two, three, four. So four reaction are there. So sixteen minus four that is equal to twelve. So answer is C. C is the correct answer. C is the correct answer. Very nice. Let's move to the next question. Calculate the distribution factor for member OA. You need to tell me, guys, what should be the distribution factor for member OA? For member OA, kindly consider this particular support as a guided roller support. Guided roller support. Do you remember, guys, what is the stiffness for guided roller support? It is not a free end. It is not a free end. It is not a free end. Okay. Tell me, guys, what is the stiffness? when far end is a guided roller what should be the stiffness when far end is a guided roller tell me guys 3ei by l no ei by l ei by l this one is what this one is i think it is roller right it look like lo roller Okay, EIL. Yes. So, guys, first, first of all, what we need to do, we need to calculate the stiffness of individual member first. Like this one is four EI by L. This one is 
foreign is ruler so it should be 3 ei by l and this one is also 3 ei by l let us consider this one is also ruler because it is look like that only and this should be ei by l correct so what is the total value of stiffness can i say that guys i need to add all the values if you add all the values how much it is 3 plus 3 plus 4 10 10 plus 1 11 so 11 ei by l okay 11 ei by l now you know that guys what should be the distribution factor for this so can i write here the distribution factor for oa is equal to koa divided by summation k so what is the value of stiffness in this case it is ei by l and divided by 11 ei by l just solve it you will get 1 by 11 as answer so d should be the answer d should be the answer d should be the answer crystal clear very nice let's move to the next question calculate the distribution factor for member ad calculate the distribution factor for member ad what should be the distribution factor for member ad ad means this one tell me guys tell me quickly what should be the answer what is the value of distribution factor for ad member very easy question are baba you know that the stiffness for this member is 4 e i by l l is equal to how much 2.5 in this case it should be 4 into 2 e i we need to write and divide by what 5 okay sir now guys uh, you can see here i can cancel this particular value and what i will get exactly this particular stiffness is also 4 e i by 2.5 now tell me guys there are two brothers who are having same strength then what should be the distribution factor jeevan ka bhar aadha aadha uthayenge yes or no tell me guys yes or no so the total stiffness is what the total stiffness is nothing as you need to add both the values you will get 8 ei by 2.5 and the distribution factor for da distribution factor for da is equal to how much it should be 4 ei by 2.5 and divide by 8 ei by 2.5 you will get 1 by 2. 1 by 2. That means B is the correct answer. Very nice. Let's move to the next question. What is the degree of indeterminacy of a fixed arch? For a fixed arch, what should be the value of indeterminacy? Degree of indeterminacy. Fixed arch. If you have a fixed arch, then what should be the value of indeterminacy in this case b 2 hmm. santu 3 okay three very nice are baba it is very simple you just need to calculate ds is equal to what dsc plus dsi right this is the open structure so dsi is 0 what about dse dse is nothing as it is re minus 3 so re is equal to how much it is 3 this is also 3 so that means total is 6 so 6 minus 3 is equal to how much it should be 3 so that's why c is the correct answer for the problem c is the correct answer for the problem very nice let's move to the next question if we use link in a structural system then how many unknown should we uh, sorry how many unknown would we have okay if you use a link in a structure so in case of link how many unknown internal reactions are there that is the question how many unknown internal reaction are there one very nice very nice Wally. yes it should be one because we know that guys the trust member which we are having having each and a member each and every member considered to be a link only right so you know that guys this particular member will have only one reaction one reaction a surface structure has surface structure there are basically three type of structure skeleton structure surface structure 
solid structure now tell me guys if you have a surface structure what it means actually it have small thickness large thickness moderate thickness arbit thickness a it will have a smaller thickness right that means you know that guys let us suppose if we have a slab so in case of slab the thickness is very small as compared to other dimension so you can say that this is a surface structure and in which a small thickness is there next question point a is fixed b and d are hinge and c and e are pin and pin roller support okay this is roller this is roller okay and this is internal hinge okay these are nothing as internal hinge kindly consider internal hinge kindly consider internal hinge internal hinge now the question is all the span is having 1 meter right what will be the maximum point of ild of vertical reaction at c right what should be the maximum point of ild or maximum ordinate of ild when you draw the ild for vertical reaction at c so as per Mueller Breslau principle you know that guys what you need to do you need to give unit displacement this is ruler okay this is also ruler and this is hinge this is hinge and a is fixed okay now tell me guys what is the value of maximum value of ordinate in this case so just you need to remove this particular reaction and give the unit displacement in the direction of reaction itself okay so how it is trying to means what should be the maximum value of point of ild tell me guys what will be the maximum point of ild of vertical reaction at point c you need to draw the i i think uh, there's something mistake over here what will be the maximum point of ild of vertical reaction yes i think there is something missing over here there is something missing over here guys keyword is missing i think uh, the reaction should be reaction at a wait a minute guys what you need to do guys over here yes 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 it is not mentioned in the question i think so i think there is some mistake in the question right there is some mistake in the question what will be the maximum point of ild of vertical reaction at point c you need to find out the uh, value of ild at point c right that is the question i can understand and you are also able to understand that point but the reaction should be what which for which particular reaction they are asking that is the problem right so i think this there is something missing over here there is something missing over here so let us consider guys okay just imagine okay just try to draw the ild for vertical reaction at a right kindly draw the ild for vertical reaction at a clear kindly draw the ild for vertical reaction at a then how it look like so you need to consider this one is what guided ruler support okay and this is our internal hinge this one is our vertical reaction this one is our internal hinge and this one is our roller right and this is also roller okay now if you draw the ild for vertical reaction at a that means we need to give unit displacement so this particular object is trying to deviate in this manner this particular portion will remain linear and this portion is little bit linear then after that it, it will be a curvy one okay now guys you can see here at this particular point it is not possible to have any kind of ordinate i think there is also there is something missing in the question okay guys okay let it be so right now you are able to understand the ild or not 
okay right now you are able to understand the ild or not tell me guys yes in that case it should be zero in that case it should be zero okay so right now let let it be guys i think uh, there is something mis mistake in the question okay let it be let's move to the next one let's move to the next one let's move to the next one again the same figure is there now the question is what will be the area of area under the ild curve if we make it for vertical reaction at point just left to the point c guys if we make ild if we make i make it at a point just left of c okay kindly consider in this particular case you need to draw the ild listen carefully you need to draw the ild for shear force not for vertical reaction it should be shear force which is just left of point c so left of point c means this one so this should be downward and this should particular this point is downward and this point should be upward correct now if you draw the ild then how it look likes this portion will deviate in downward direction which should be like this and this portion will move upward but guys you know that the complete ordinate is taken by listen carefully the complete ordinate is taken by this particular portion and this is what this is basically one but at this particular part we don't have any kind of ordinate but the rotation will be there and if rotation will be there then this should be the figure yes or no now the question is what is this ordinate it is one what is this angle we know that guys this is one meter this is one meter this is one meter so if this particular angle you know that guys so the same angle you will have over here also that means this ordinate is also one meter or not one meter it should be one right one now tell me guys what will be the total area what will be the total area of ild can i say that guys this is one this is one and this is one and this is two so let's calculate it one by two multiply by one multiply by one plus one by two multiply by two multiply by one kindly calculate this value and let me know the answer you can cancel it and this value is 0 0.5 plus 1 it should be 1 1.5 1.5 1.5 by 1.5 1.5 all of you are able to understand understood understood this is nothing as you need to just find out the area of ild curve if we make it for shear force shear force at a point just left of point c right let's move to the next question carry over moment is defined as what what do you mean by carry over moment what do you mean by carry over moment that is the question carry over moment tell me guys carry over moment is defined as what it is the additional moment applied at c the moment developed or induced at one end due to moment at another end very nice guys just imagine let us consider at this particular end we have certain moment m so a carry over moment should be forward in the other support so that means the moment developed or induced at one end due to moment at another end right it is c it should be c very nice let's move to the next question carry over moment at end b due to moment m applied at end a you know that guys in this case we are trying to apply the moment at a is equal to how much it should be m now what should be the moment at end b that is the question tell me guys quickly c m by 2 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 c is the correct answer m by 2 it should not be d it should not be d and please remember this particular point the direction of applied moment and the direction of carry over moment will always remain same 
अरे बाबा इट शुड बी पॉजिटिव इट शुड बी पॉजिटिव इट शुड बी पॉजिटिव इट शुड बी पॉजिटिव बोथ शुड बी पॉजिटिव इन नेचर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सुपर पोजिशन इज एप्लीकेबल वेन वेन यू आर एबल टू अप्लाई द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सुपर पोजिशन दैट इज द क्वेश्चन टेल मी गाइज डिफ्लेक्शन आर लीनियर फंक्शन ऑफ द अप्लाइड लोड अप्लाइड फोर्स मटेरियल ओबे हुक्स लॉ द एक्शन ऑफ अप्लाइड फोर्स will be affected by small deformation of the structure none of the above which should be the major 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 condition guys some are saying b some are saying c c the action of applied force will be affected by the small na nah, gandi baat no Guys, there are two option which can be possible. A can be possible, B can be possible. This is nothing as assumption, but this is the main condition. This is the main condition. This is the main condition of the principle of superposition. That means our stress function should have a linear relationship, a linear relationship, a linear relationship with the applied force, right? That's why, guys, either you can take A or B. Both are the correct answer. But if you have to choose. a single answer i recommend you guys kindly tick a not b right because this is the assumption and this is the main criteria of principle of superposition so we need to tick main criteria only okay okay next question guys the castiglano second theorem can be used to compute deflection castiglano's second theorem can be used to compute deflection tell me guys castiglano second theorem to compute deflection c okay at the point under the load only right 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 correct guys correct करेक्ट यस यू नो दैट गाइज इफ यू हैव कैलकुलेटेड द स्ट्रेन एनर्जी देन द टोटल स्ट्रेन एनर्जी शुड बी मींस द टोटल स्ट्रेन एनर्जी फर्स्ट यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट देन टेक द डेरिवेटिव विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द फोर्स देन यू विल गेट द डिफ्लेक्शन इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स इट सेल्फ राइट सो दैट्स वाई एट द पॉइंट अंडर द लोड ओनली दैट मीन्स सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर द प्रॉब्लम नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू गाइज which of the following method of structure analysis is displacement method which of the following method is a displacement method which of the following method is a displacement method a moment distribution method yes 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 correct a is the correct answer mdm 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 next question guys In displacement method of structure analysis, the basic unknowns are what? The basic unknowns are what? In displacement method, which of the following you have to consider as a unknown? That is the question. A definitely displacement like our delta value, theta value are the unknown. Correct. a should be the correct answer next question in front of you a rigid jointed plane frame is stable and statically determinate if a rigid jointed rigid jointed kindly consider rigid jointed rigid jointed structure not a pen jointed structure rigid jointed structure okay santu no problem tell me guys for a rigid jointed structure it is statically determinate and stable when Do you remember formula to write down the DSI value? DSI is equal to what? Three m minus three j minus r e, right? So it should be equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, can I say that guys? Three m plus r e is equal to what? Three j. Then only it is stable as well as statically determinate. So that's why C is the correct answer for the problem. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू गाइस व्हिच इज रिलेटेड टू दी आईएलडी काइंडली रीड इट वेरी केयरफुली व्हेन अ यूडीएल शॉर्टर देन दी स्पान ऑफ द ग्रिडर मूव्स फ्रॉम लेफ्ट टू राइट देन द कंडीशन फॉर मैक्सिमम बेंडिंग मूवमेंट एट अ सेक्शन इज व्हाट आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट the maximum bending moment at a section is given by which condition d the load position should be such that the section divide the load in the same ratio as it divide the span yes or no let me explain it do you remember this condition guys let us suppose this is a simply supported beam and let us consider this is our section c this is a this is b now what i need to do i need to place the udl in that manner in that manner like this in that manner so that the portion of udl will get divided by the section in the same ratio as we have divided the span like this one is a dash and b dash and this one is a and b like this that means a dash by a should be equal to b dash by b right that's why d is the correct answer for the problem next question in front of you The degree of kinematic intimacy of pin jointed plane frame is given by what? Pin jointed plane frame. A two J minus R E two J minus R E two J minus R E. Right. D S sorry D K is equal to what? It is two J minus R E for truss. Very nice. Next question, guys. Next question. Kindly read it. Study the following statement. Displacement method is more useful when degree of kinematic indeterminacy is greater than degree of static indeterminacy. When you have to prefer the displacement method, when the value of d k is greater than d s or it should be lesser one. We know that guys, when the number of unknown of joint displacement is lesser. as compared to number of redundant reaction then only i will prefer the displacement method correct now tell me guys for this one the statement is wrong what about the second statement it is correct that means displacement method will have more useful when the degree of kinematic indeterminacy is less than the static one okay the force method is more useful when the degree of static indeterminacy is greater than the kinematic one no guys so d is the correct one b is correct one because in force method the ds value should be lesser as compared to dk so b and d are the correct answer that means t last question of sorry i think yes yes we have some more question also okay tell me guys the deformation of spring the deformation of spring produced by a unit load is called as what the deformation of a spring produced by a unit load is called as what stiffness stiffness or flexibility let me explain both the terminology stiffness means what it is the displacement caused by unit force displacement caused by unit force that means a is the correct answer or b display let me explain once again displacement displacement caused by unit force caused by unit force the displacement caused by unit force is known as what stiffness now tell me guys the correct answer is what a or b it should be a stiffness next question next question which one of the following statement is correct the number of unknowns to be determined in the flexibility matrix method is equal to what the number of unknown in the flexibility matrix method you know that guys flexibility matrix method is nothing as that is our force method so the total number of unknown is equal to how much it should be a that means static indeterminacy static indeterminacy right next question which one of the following statement is true with regard to the flexibility method of analysis very very easy question but you need to 
read it very carefully which statement is correct over here guys as per the flexibility matrix method when you have to use the flexibility matrix method when you have lesser number of ds value right ds is lesser right that means this method is useful when the indeterminate structure we have to solve with lesser degree of static indeterminacy that's why d is the correct answer next question St stiffness matrix method is the category of what stiffness matrix method displacement method force method compatibility equilibrium we know that it is displacement method as well as it is equilibrium method so it should be d d is the correct answer yes or no yes Antu, i will take that particular session i will take that session no issue but tell me the answer of this one guys tell me the answer of this one it is correct Stiffness matrix method is a displacement method as well as equilibrium method. Next question. A three span continuous beam is fixed at the end. Three span that means you need to consider two support as a fix and I think in between that we have three span. Okay, 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 okay. Three span means one span and two span and three span. Okay, three span is there. Right. Then what should be the size of stiffness matrix? That is the question. Okay. Now, guys, this is basically three span. One span, two span, and three span. And these are the supports. Now, you know that, guys, in this particular case, how many unknowns we are having? That means what is the value of DK? You know that at this particular ruler, we have one rotation. At this particular ruler, we have second rotation. Only two unknown is there. Not four. Not four. Do not consider member R elastic in nature. Do not consider it. While solving the problem by using the displacement method, you need to consider all the member are inextensible in nature always. That means the linear displacement is not there. Understood? Now tell me guys, only two unknowns are there. That means theta 1 and theta 2. Can I say that A is the correct answer for this? A is the correct answer for this? Yes or no? Perfect. And that's it guys. That's it. So I think all of you have able to understand all the concepts which we have discussed. So the guys, in this particular case, you can see here, uh, if you want to join our test series, you can join it at affordable price for gate and ESC examination, right? So I think all of you have loved it. Sir, you are. Thank you, Abdul. Thank you so much. Uh, what you can do, Abdul, you kindly mail me. Okay, kindly mail me and... Uh, we will discuss it, right? Kindly mail me. I will help you, right? Kindly mail me. This is my mail ID. Kindly mail me and uh, we will discuss about that, right? Okay. So guys, uh, you will get this particular PDF on my telegram. So what you can do and for such session, uh, session also guys, you can join my telegram group. So that uh, you can have the link of such type of session, which will be there in future. Okay. But let me tell you one thing more guys. Tomorrow we have one marathon session at 11 a.m. on our Baiju's exam prep YouTube channel. Right. Which will be taken by Satyaji sir and me. Right. So half portion he will take and half portion I will take. Okay. So kindly join that particular session also guys in the marathon. Right. Uh, Afrid, I... Uh, the exact number of questions right now, I'm not able to tell you because uh, I need to discuss with the Satyaji sir also. But you have abundant number of questions because almost it will uh, it will be a session of 2 hours, right? So you can join that tomorrow at 11 a.m. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. again. Okay. Right. So if you want to join that particular session, guys, I will share the link also on my telegram. Kindly join it. Okay, and you will get this particular PDF and I have shared the PDF of environmental engineering formula revision already on my telegram kindly download it. Okay. Okay, guys. So let's close the session and let's meet in the next one. Bye. <coughs> Bye guys. Take care. Thank you so much. <coughs> Excuse me.